Hello, my name is Patrick Webb, and we're continuing our discussion of the chemistry of plaster in heritage building with a consideration of our first binder, clay. Clay is perhaps the original binder. And what is clay exactly? Well, it's a result of erosion, specifically of uh, silicon dioxide type stones, such as granite or felspar, over millions of years. Um, the resulting product is a hydrous aluminum silicate, and that uh, describes at least a family of clays, clays that are useful for plastering. Well, let's dive into the chemistry here. First, I'm going to write um, the, the formula a certain way that kind of helps to break down what clays are made of. Here we have uh, the alumina um, component. And then we have uh, two of the silicon dioxide component. And that's chemically bound uh, to water, H2O. But in reality, um, this is not simply a mixture of those materials. And if we rewrite the formula this way, we reveal how the compound uh, organizes itself in nature. So this is what we would describe as a hydrous aluminum silicate, which uh, describes um, it's the chemical formula, for example, kaolin and uh, other clays. The distinction being made is how those, um, the particular compound um, organizes itself uh, that gives um, clays, even with the same chemical formula, slightly different properties. Well, how are clays manufactured? Really, um, clays exist all over the world, sometimes at the sur surface of the earth, or maybe just underneath a, a layer of topsoil. So they're easily accessible. Um, you can dig them up, lay them out in the sun, and let the sun dry them out. Uh, so manufacturing process is a very low embodied energy process. There's, uh, there's no cooking involved. Uh, clay has certain properties. Um, since it doesn't have this baking process, it doesn't have a chemical set. It has what we refer to as a mechanical one. Um, you add a little bit of water, you spread on the plaster, and then it simply dries out. Without water leaving um, the system, it becomes a little bit friable, though, very soft. So it's very important in the application of clay plasters to um, compress it, perhaps with a trowel or wood float, and that collapses the structure and uh, results in a much more um, durable surface. Another property that clay has is it organizes itself in what they call platelets or tetrahedral sheets. And um, a benefit of that is it, it can readily absorb and release water vapor. So clay is an excellent material for um, regulating humidity and uh, temperature in an interior environment. Well, what are some good specifications for clay plasters? Well, in interiors, um, clay gives a, a matte type of finish. Um, it is really useful if um, the client or, or the homeowner would like a, a finish that is easily repairable. Um, clay is, can be re-wet and reworked, so in that sense, it, it has that type of, that type of durability. But if you're looking for an initial durability, something that's very hard, more like a bulletproof type material, um, clay may not be appropriate, for example, for like high, um, high traffic areas, such as like a hotel lobby. Well, um, exteriors, clays are used as well, and it works very effectively um, in dry, arid climates. We think of adobes and the earth plasters and the alises that that cover them. Uh, I just came back from Santa Fe and the desert southwest and it was so nice to see so many um, earthen and, and clay finishes on the exterior. Um, however, if you're in a climate that is um, subject to freeze-thaw cycles or a lot of rain, um, clay can be also used, but it needs to be stabilized. And uh, that can be done with a, a mixture of but natural hydraulic lines are very effective, and sometimes natural cements, depending on the climate. And we'll talk a little bit later in a further video about 
how some of uh, these various binders, which ones are compatible, and what type of results you get by, by mixing them.